Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Andrea. We're going to do a kind of chat. We're going to carry on doing uh, Red Riding Hood from the Kelly Horton's Death Story Darlings. Um, I haven't posted for a while. There's a lot been going on. I'll, we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, this is an adult channel. We talk about adult topics and themes and um, these videos are not made for or intended to be seen by children. Let's crack on. Um, so yes, yeah, so the last video I posted was my supplies collection. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see me use anything, like I said, in the description, just let me know in the comments and I will certainly try and accommodate that with the rest of the things I want to do for you. But uh, we're going to carry on with Red Riding Hood. Um, she's probably got a different name. I'm not actually sure. Let's see if we can find it. Because at the back, she's got all the pictures. And then she... I think it's after Maleficent. Maleficent. Ruby Red, that's what we've called. That's what she's called her. Um, so, how are you? I hope you are all really well. Um, we're okay. But uh, things have been a little bit stressful last Wednesday evening or afternoon my mum fell down the stairs she didn't fall down a lot of stairs but she fell down enough and she's hurt her wrist and her ankle and she's so stubborn she won't go to the um, uh, hospital and get an x-ray so she's just lying on the sofa suffering which is not good for her but I can't I can't I can't make her a nor can my dad um, I haven't seen her since Friday because on Saturday Jennifer came down with some sort of bug um, and we were having dinner and she just threw up everywhere which was lovely so she, oh, she looked so shocked when she did it so we cleaned her up and sat her down and then a bit later on she had something to eat again and it was fine she managed to keep that down uh, put her to bed and she was a bit restless through the night and then Sunday she wanted some yogurt and she threw that back up and that was pretty much what happened all day every time she had something she threw it up she was drinking plenty of water so she was at least still getting some fluids inside of her and then so I didn't go to it yesterday stayed off with her um, because it's Tuesday when I'm filming this now you'll be seeing this on Wednesday so on Monday I stayed off with her and um, gave her some breakfast and she threw that up again so she was throwing up on Monday so bless her so we had to stay off as well and tomorrow she normally spends the morning with my mum and dad but of course my mum's hurt so I've got no childcare for tomorrow so we'll be off again not happy but there's not a lot I can do because I have spoke to the nursery but there's no availability that should be it's because there's no shoulder there it looks like it should be red I'm just going to do it as her hair um, on Wednesdays I got her in for Monday of next week I had her in for Monday of this week actually but then she was ill so I've got her in for Monday next week, which is fine. But, um, yeah. It's not good. So. The problem is I have got no other way of getting childcare for her other than nurse or my mum and dad. So. I might have to see if I can get her back in full time from April when she goes down to the big next room. Uh, so it's been a bit of, sh bit of a bad long weekend. So to be honest, I haven't really been in the right frame of mind for colouring. I've done a little bit and I haven't been in the right frame of mind really for making videos. So that's why you've only seen the... Um, Supplies one, which I filmed a little while ago. Um, I'm going to try to get back into it now. 
so we'll see. Um, just been a hell of a week, really. It's not good, but it is what it is, and I can't do anything about it. I've got to just uh, try and sort something out, and I'll, I'll have to speak to the nursery about from April. See if they can get her in. So my days have been filled with CBBs and all that sort of stuff. Lucky me, eh? It's very frustrating because while I don't really want to work and I've enjoyed being off with her, I need to work, I need the money, so... But obviously she's, her health's got to come first and if I've got no childcare, I've got no childcare. You know, so I'll have to ring in tomorrow and say, well, Jennifer's better, but I can't come in because I've got no childcare today. Um, and then I'll, I'll actually, because we don't actually speak to our line managers, um, we speak to somebody else, so I'll actually text my line manager. I'll ask her to give me a ring if she can. And I'll just say, let's say I just don't know what I'm going to do at the moment because I've got no childcare for the foreseeable future on a, on a Wednesday. At the moment, I seem to be able to get her into nursery on a Monday, but on a Wednesday, I, I can't, I can't get her in. And there's no one else that can have her. So it's really worrying. It's a real worry. But we shall see. Poor Jennifer though. She's okay now, but uh, she's, a, she's much better now uh, than she was. She was really. Every time the poor kid threw up, she just looked horrified, like it was the end of the world. She really didn't know what to do with herself, and then of course she'd start crying, and I was like, oh, come on, darling, it's all right. But, you know, it's not very nice for her. Poor thing. But like I said, she is much better now. She's a lot happier. she was which is good so poor kid I've been alright tired because obviously I've been sleeping in with her and every time she cries out I'm like oh my god is she okay um, or I've not been sleeping at all been checking in on my mum every day, like phoning. I mean, I can't obviously come down and see her every day. And that's I think Jennifer was very upset today because she wanted to see her nana because she hadn't seen her and her granddad. And she was going, nana, nana. I said, no, we're not going down today. Nana's not well. well. We'll see her Thursday when we go back to work and when we go back to nursery. And she sobbed her heart out. It was, it was horrible because you know, she misses her nana and granddad. They miss her, obviously, but her mum's resting. She can't really walk very far. She needs, to, she should really come and get an x ray, but I've, I've got my priority is, as much as I love my mum at the moment, my priority is to make sure Jennifer's okay. And because she's been poorly, I just haven't had the time to think about anything else. It is hard because I want to help my mum. You know, my dad. But they're just... The generation, just too stubborn. They are just too, too stubborn, I'm afraid. So, there's not a lot I can do about that other than be there if they ask me for something, which, of course, they will be, but who knows if they actually will. So I'm putting lots of different colours into her hair to give it a bit of, you know. So 
so we haven't done much this weekend um, eBay's not going well oh, it's very quiet but whether or not that's due because people aren't buying things because they're stocking up because of the coronavirus I don't know um, obviously I haven't been working on eBay like I would normally because of Jennifer being sick and oh, it's just been horrendous time um, so I don't know I mean I don't know whether it's because of the coronavirus or whether people just aren't buying or whether it's just because I haven't been listening I mean I have had a few sales I, I posted two the other day I have a few to post on Saturday but I can't I just don't know I mean it, it has gone quiet this month it might be because I'm not listing so I must get back to that but obviously I can't really do it you know as much as I would like to when uh, my mum being ill and Jennifer being um, ill and oh everybody's ill I'm all right though I feel fine I'm just a bit tired but not so tired that I can't work you know I can't do things out this is a bit red but don't worry it's not going to be red give her evil looking eyes couldn't we <laughs> so I'm hoping to get this one finished this week because next next week I want to do a St Patrick's Day one with the markers because um, I think that would be nice Because um, John, the Bibliophile colourist, is obviously doing, uh, not only is he doing a Whimsical 2020, this month uh, for March is Marker Madness. So it's about using all your markers and colouring with those, which is nice. I like colouring my markers. I love the Everblends. I have been doing a picture with my um, Touch Fives, and I might have to finish it off with the Everblends. But uh, it looks nice. I just thought I'd, I'd use up a bit of the touch fives because some of them are, uh, are wearing out. Some of them aren't. Some of them are still great, but some of them are wearing out. Skin white doesn't seem to be wearing out at all. So. Tired. Here we go. I'll just put a little bit of green over this brown. Hazely colour. We won't put too much on because there we go. That's more than enough. That's it. Oh. Okay. I'm just using up some of my different colours that I don't use very often. So I was planning on doing a, a weekly vlog this week, but. As you can tell, due to everything else, that went out the window. So I'm sorry about that, those of you who were looking forward to it. I will do one again soon when I... I, thought I forgot this time it's just that um with everything that's going on I just I just can't I can't do it um, so I'm gonna use a dark green up here and then a lighter green down here it'll still be fairly dark though I was only gonna do this as night time I think I know there's birds but it's they're silhouetted so I'm thinking it's night time so I'm just gonna Colouring over here.
See, I'm enjoying this one. It's a really nice picture. It's really pretty. I don't think I'd use my markers in it. The paper is far too thin. I mean, I know it bleeds through everything anyway, but even so, I just think it would pull the paper up. But I, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe we will try it. I don't know. Let's see. Let's do this one on top. So I've been watching on YouTube, I mean other than what I normally watch which is like the colouring videos and record videos and that sort of stuff, um, Doctor Who related videos because I like Doctor Who, I've been a fan of Doctor Who since the uh, the 80s, very, very early 80s, the end of Tom Baker beginning of Peter Davison's reign as the Doctor. Um, Stopped watching it when Colin Baker turned over because he didn't like him when he took over. Um, and then came back into it when uh, Sylvester McCoy uh, took over as the Doctor because he thought it couldn't be any worse than Colin Baker. Really didn't like Colin Baker. Appreciate Colin Baker more now. Still not a big fan of his, uh, his Doctor, but still. Uh, the classic Doctors, my favourite, is John Pertwee and then Peter Davison. But uh, yeah, so I've been watching things like about the missing episodes that uh, in the 1970s the um, BBC junked a lot of programming, not uh, just Doctor Who. It has to be said it wasn't just Doctor Who. So basically in those days it was all filmed onto video, two inch videotape, which was very expensive to buy and very expensive to store. So they would make prints 16mm or 35mm to send out to various countries and also um, for the archive. Um, but at those back in those times the archive wasn't very serious about keeping stuff because they didn't foresee um, the video market that would uh, come out in the 1980s onwards and now the streaming services. There, there was no way of repeating it. They, they, as far as they were concerned, it would never be repeated. It wasn't made for that. It was made to be watched and then discarded, much like the silent movies were back in the uh, early days of cinema. They were disposable. So in the early 70s, around 73, 74, the BBC started to wipe anything that they considered was not likely to be ever used again and that was a lot of Doctor Who episodes and a lot of the videotape was lost. At the same time the 35mm to 60mm archive thinking that the videotape archive was looking after it decided to get rid of a load of their stuff as well and so they started destroying the videotape. Then at some point, somebody, a man named Ian Levine, who was a music producer, came along and wanted to buy the Doctor Who episodes from them. And they were happy for him to buy them at that point. And he was there and he went into the video archive and they were literally waiting to junk a load of episodes. He said, well, no, 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 the BBC have given me permission to buy these from you. Oh, I want them. So stop. And then they did, a, uh, I think it was about 78, they did a, a stock tape type thing where they looked at everything in the archive. And they found a lot of the episodes that were then missing. There was over, I think it was 160 episodes missing, presumed lost forever. They found quite a few of those. And at current date, which is 2020, there are, I think, 97 episodes missing from Doctor Who archives and they are all from Doctors 1 and 2, William Hartnell and Patrick Troughton and it's a great shame. Some of them have been animated and I've got a couple of those 
and the, the animations were really good. I mean, it's not like watching the real thing, which would be nice, but it's better than not being able to see it again. But there's so many of them that they haven't animated yet. And it's such a shame that they really need to crack on and animate them so we can see them all. Um, I think so anyway, because I like watching classic Who. So they, they, I mean, the theory is always the, the thought that it might turn up somewhere in someone's private collection or in a forgotten store somewhere. A lot of those stores have been exhausted. They've, they've been to them, they've been checked and they're like, no, we haven't got it on. Yes, we have. It still might happen that something's been mislabeled somewhere. We just don't know. But the, apparently there's one episode that they are 100% sure will never be recovered because it was only made for the UK market. And it was part of the Daleks master plan which fell over the Christmas period. Um, so they made one because they didn't want it to be on at that point because they didn't think people would be watching. They made a special episode, a filler episode. And it was just called The Feast of Stephen to, to go out. And, and they think because that was only made for the UK market and there's no copy of it in existence at the... Um, in the BBC archives that there's no way of that episode ever ever turning up which is a great shame um, but you can't really have a go at the BBC for being so short-sighted because they're not the only ones that did it I mean and it wasn't just Doctor Who it was a lot of their stuff that they they did that to the storage was expensive the tape was reusable, so it was a commodity that could be reused. It was expensive to buy. Common sense is that when you're spending um, the public money, because obviously the BBC is publicly funded by the licence fee, they had to save money where they could, and that was one of the ways they did it. So you can't, although we can knock them and we can say, oh, this was very short-sighted now, back then they were just doing what was fiscally good sense. They didn't realise they would make a lot more money by keeping it for future generations. Now, of course, everything is backed up a million times and you can purchase them all on DVD or download them and stream them. I think wonderfully that we have this archive. I, I do like them. I've recently ordered um, the David Tennant's last episode where he regenerates. There's two of the specials. They weren't part of a season. There was a couple of winter specials um, Waters of Mars and I think it's called The End of Time uh, that he regenerates in and I don't have that one so I've ordered that and then once I've got that one I can get Matt Smith's first season because I'm trying to get them in order where I can. So I've got seasons one to four I just need this specials disc and then we'll get season five. In general if there's a Christmas special it is generally on the main season disc but not always so She's looking good. But yeah, I have been watching Doctor Who since I was a kid. Like I said, I, although I, I probably did watch more Tom Baker than I remember. The Doctor I remember the most, first time around was Peter Davison, as David Tennant put it in the, the special that was made for children in need, because you're my doctor. And I know exactly what he means by that, as the doctor he grew up with. And, um, yeah, that's what he means by th that he was his doctor. Um, but yeah, I mean, my favorite characters are from the Davison era. My favourite companion wasn't Turlo or Adric or Tegan or Perry, it was Nyssa. One of the lesser, less popular characters. I, there was just something about her I really liked. She was serious, she was intelligent. You know, she was scientific, not that I am, but I, I really admired the fact that she wasn't wearing particularly skimpy clothes at that point. She was dressed in a, a purple velvet or a maroon velvet trouser suit. And it was bloody lovely. And she had gorgeous brown curls and oh, she was just stunning. And she was my favorite. I was very, very gutted when she left in Terminus. But, you know, actors want to move on and, and she, 
took a break from acting for a while. She then did make an appearance in one of the Children in Need specials with Peter Davison that was set on Albert Square. I, I remember that. They've done some good specials over the, over the years. They really have. And this pencil's getting really small. This is blue indigo, indigo basically, because the indigo bit has actually come off where I've sharpened it so small it's like this big. But I like indigo for sky and for night skies. So yeah, it is one of those where she was my favourite companion. I think to this day she's my favourite Doctor, Doctor Who companion. Um, Perry screamed too much. Ace was okay with the Seventh Doctor, but I hated the way she just called him Professor all the time. It's like, no, he's, he's the Doctor, don't call him Professor. And I found that really irritating. <laughs> but that's just me, you know? I mean, other people loved it. She was, other than that, she was great. She was a really cool companion. I really liked her. Out of the new companions, I'm one of the few people who didn't like Rose. I just didn't like Billy Piper as Rose. I, th I thought she was just so irritating but again that's just me and it's my personal opinion I do understand that people really like Rose and fair play to them if you really like it that's great but she wasn't my cup of tea I much preferred Donna Noble I thought she was hysterical River Song's brilliant the ponds were okay I guess um Bill Potts was quite good Clara was annoying and the current crop of companions, I can't really say a lot for because they've got about as much personality as a wet fish. Really, they just haven't had storylines good enough in which to grow. I mean, Graham has, which is Bradley Walsh. I know he's leaving, or he's supposed to be leaving it in, in the Christmas special or the winter special. Um, as is his grandson, Ryan, who I don't like. And then the, the the girl Yaz is supposed to be staying. She's got potential, but at the moment, they just don't really do anything. I think it's because they've gone back to having too many in the TARDIS. I mean, we haven't seen three companions in the TARDIS um, since, I would say, Peter Davison. So, for instance... But yes, we had the ponds and River Song, but River Song might only be in one episode. She was already a well-defined character because she was recurring anyway. Um, mostly the first lot of Amy and, and Rory was Amy. So, and then Rory joined in and he was okay. But after that they went back to having just one companion now of course in 1963 and I am rambling on about Doctor Who and you'll probably find this really boring unless you like Doctor Who uh, they did start with three companions his granddaughter Susan and then of course Ian and Barbara the teachers from the school but because of the way that the episodes were done it was easier to utilize the three characters um, and give them all good parts because sometimes you'd have an episode a set of episodes would be six a story would be six episodes long not just 45 minutes so and it would be around 20 to 25 minutes per episode so you had more time for each character to develop um obviously in the days of peter davison you had adric nissa and tegan for a while till adric was killed and then it was just Nissa and Tegan, and then Turlo came along. Um, but with Adric, Nissa and Tegan, there were a few episodes where one or more of the characters was missing because they gave them something else to do. So, for instance, I remember one of Tegan's stories, Nissa was absent because the character wasn't well. So she was only in the first episode and the last episode when they came back. So she was, she was bound to TARDIS. Now, whether or not it's because the actress was doing something else or she generally wasn't well, or just because they wanted to focus on this particular story. And they never did give Nyssa enough to do, sadly. After, you know, she was... I don't think she was meant to carry on as a character. I think she was only meant... That stopped recording. I'm not sure how long ago it did. But anyway, I was talking about uh, Doctor Who and Nyssa and Tegan and that. So at the end of The Keeper of Tracken, the Master takes over Nyssa's father, Tremus. And escapes in his TARDIS. 
and this was just left there. And then in the next one, which is L Logopolis, the Watcher has brought her to Logopolis to meet the Doctor, and then of course the home planet is destroyed by, I think by the Master, something the Master does. So Traken is destroyed. Um, but originally she was not supposed to be in any other episode. They wrote her into it because the production team liked her as a person and they liked her character and they, they liked the actress. So they gave her a recurring role. So obviously they had to adapt to the stories that were already prepared for uh, Tegan and Adric. And of course when you've got somebody who's extremely clever, much like Liz Shaw was back in uh, the Pertwee era, it's very hard because she can talk to the Doctor pretty much on his level but of course that doesn't explain it to the rest of us who aren't into all the sciencey stuff. So that's why his companions have always been a little bit on the dim side. Hmm, that's supposed to be arm I think. That's okay, I can do that afterwards. Um, so that they can... Uh, We talk to, it talk down to almost, um, so he can explain what what the problem is, what's going on, how he's going to resolve it. So, and um, another thing with the new Doctor Who that I think a lot of fans are finding annoying is the Doctor's reliance on the sonic screwdriver too much. And she does, she just waves it about and she uses it, she scans things, she uses it, and it solves all the problems. And this is the reason they got rid of it in the first place. In the Peter Davison story, The Visitation, uh, which is set in London in, at the time of the Great Fire, I believe it's that episode, um, the, the Sonic's destroyed. And it, Peter Davison said, oh, excuse me, says, I feel like I lost an old friend, I've just lost my oldest friend or an old friend, something like that anyway. But and the reason they got rid of it was because it was solving too many problems and he didn't have to think or plan. He just used the screwdriver and it solved all the problems and off they went. And that's why they got rid of it. And they need to do something like that again because it's like, it's just constant sonicness. The best person to use the sonic, in my opinion, or to have words about the sonic was uh, John Hurt in the, the Time of the Doctor. I think it was um, the 50th anniversary special where they... Um, he says, what are you going to do? Put a wardrobe together? And he's very sarcastic about it. And it's it's really funny. It's, that is one of the best specials they did, I think. And of course you have Tom Baker. Who amazingly wouldn't recur his role as the Doctor in The Five Doctors when he was asked. For whatever reason. And he was entitled to. But come the 50th anniversary, he, he played the curator which is generally thought to be an older version of the Doctor, that, you know, because he says you might revisit a few old faces. And I know a lot of people, if you're a Doctor Who fan, let me know what you thought of the end of season 12, as they call it. New Who 12. Um, what did you think about the last episode with the Doctor being the timeless child and the originator of the... Time Lord's ability to regenerate. So what what do you think about that? Um, and the fact that the Doctor's led many other lives previously to the one we know, which started with William Hartnell. What do you think? And that the mind was wiped. Do you think that Chibnall is is ruining canon, such as it can be with Doctor Who? Because with Doctor Who canon is a very loose term because every showrunner changes things to suit themselves, which is. It should be with sci-fi. Or do you think he's created um, something new that's going to be exciting for canon, that's going to open up the worlds a bit more? It's brought back, has it brought back some of the mystery? Has it destroyed some of the mystery? Uh, I'm really interested. Now, I was dubious about it to start with because I thought this is going to really wreck it, you know, and, and piss on Hartnell being the first, the original, you might say, as he once said. I don't think it did that personally. 
I think by wiping the doctor's memory and making him her have had many different lives I, I, I don't think that really ruins anything because they've wiped the memory to William Hartnell Doctor, he would have been the first. As far as you were, he was the first. He wouldn't have known any different. All it does is open up a huge backstory and somewhere for the, the seasons to go. Now, of course, when Chibnall leaves and decides he doesn't want to run the show anymore, the next person that takes over may turn around and change it all again. And that's the thing, you just don't know what each showrunner is going to do. For instance, in Old Who, and this is I was, one of the videos I was watching was about the differences between New Who and Old and Classic Who, is there was no, ever, never, ever any romance between the Doctor and the Companions. And I think part of that is because it was made for children. It's not so made for children anymore, even though... Chibnall seems to want to attract new fans rather than keep the old fans, hence the changing of the ending and the Doctor's um, history. He, it's not aimed at children. You've got to remember this went out originally at five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Tea time. It was for children. So there would never have been any impropriety of the Doctor having a relationship with any member of his crew. It just wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have been the done thing in the 60s. And you've got to remember, it, it was of the 60s. And, and that kind of stayed uh, through the 80s because a lot of the time, yes, his companions were young and mostly female, although there were the few males throughout the, the um, series. But he was also always more of a father figure, even at his youngest, uh, with Peter Davison. You know, he was always more of a teacher, a father figure. And to me, that made it better. And I think that's one of the things I don't like about New Who is this this relationship. And one of the reasons why the Doctor wouldn't get into a relationship with a human in, in, in is because he was, was going to outlive them. He was going to watch them get old and die, much like Jack Hartness in Torchwood. And they actually showed that happening of how he, you know, and that's why he distanced himself from people. Because that's what would happen. And yes, okay, Rose ended up with a meta doctor. But oh, that's another story we won't go into. But, you know, nobody could stand that heartbreak. Watching someone you love get old and die. And he, he knew it would happen. Even the doctor ages. So anyway, that's enough about Doctor Who. What did you think about it? Let me know if you watch it down in the comments below. And if not, I do apologise for rambling on about something you're not interested in for the last 20 minutes. One of the things I do want to start doing is watching some movies again. I haven't watched a movie for ages again. It's something I can only do when Jennifer's gone to bed because she wants BBs on all the time. In fact, the first thing she says when she gets up is Dada and BBs. But she goes, BBs. And it's just CBBs. Half the time, she's not even watching it. I'm going to say that if you say she shouldn't let her watch so much TV. She doesn't watch it. It's on in the background. It's very rare she'll actually sit and watch something. She did earlier on. The things she'll watch is Twirly Woos. Waffle the dog, she loves Waffle. Um, Mr. Tumble, so something special. She loves that and she tries to do the sign language as well. It's so cute. And what else does she like? She likes Swashbuckle. And that's about it, I think. There's not that much that she will actually sit and watch. So, you know, most of the time she's um, colouring or playing with her toys or you know stuff like that so she doesn't actually sit and watch it for that much not enough for me to think hang on she's watching far too much TV 
yeah and it's not on all day we turn it off in the afternoon when she has her, her little sleep and uh yeah so bless her heart so it's on but she doesn't really watch it she i think it's secure it's like a security blanket she likes to know it's there i think oh she's so sweet you know like you'll be sitting there and she, the tv's on and she'll come over with a book saying and she'll want you to read it to you. I said, well, what are you watching this? She said, no, no, read. And then you have to read to it. And that's fine. I love reading to her. And then she'll look at you and she'll go, more? And she'll go on then, go get another book. And she'll run over and get another book from the book stack. She's got a little cart with her books in it, like at the library. So she then uh, goes and gets her little book and <laughs> brings it over. It's very, very sweet. She brings her books over and we have a read. And then when she gets bored, she goes off and does something else. She'll go and find something else to play with. Like her twirly woos or her duplo or a little tree house. Mostly she likes to colour. She loves colouring. She really I mean I guess it's because she sees me. I don't do um so much around her but I do do a bit around her she does see me doing it she sees me colouring in mostly mandalas and then she sees me colouring and she she wants to have a go and she's trying to colour in the lines now she's holding a pen she can hold a pen pretty much properly up like that not exactly right but very close to holding it correctly and she just likes to colour in mostly scribbles but she will try, if she got a picture, she'll try and colour in the lines. And then you can always, you know. It's really sweet to see her try and colour. It really is. She's very, very sweet. Of course she ends up with more paint and ink on her than anywhere else. And, uh quite funny because she they do the paint in the hands at nursery where they get the paints out and then they make hand prints and she tries to do that with felt pen she doesn't realize it won't work so maybe tomorrow we'll actually yeah uh, get out the um some paints and make nana a get well card i just don't know what i'm going to do for child care it's really starting to worry me but there's not a lot I can do. It's like this Wednesday and next Wednesday is, is going to be a problem. I don't know about the week after because mum might be fine by then. And then again, she might not. Oh dear, it's hard to know what to, to do, isn't it? This one, I think. What colour is this? This is a hearty choke. I have never used this one. Tell that because it needs sharpening. I'm going to give her some foresty coloured garb underneath her red coat cloak. Oh, that's actually quite nice. So we'll have to stop soon because uh, we've been going around 34. 44 minutes it's quite a long one I think one more pick one more one more coloring session and we'll have finished this there's not a lot left to do to be honest um, there really isn't is there or maybe we'll just carry on and finish it off then Sorry if this video is going to be a bit long. I know some of you like the longer ones. <laughs> the only problem with the long videos, it takes so long to edit them and render them ready for um, uploading. They really take forever, which is a pain because 
you know you don't want to be taking forever on them you want it uh, up as quickly as possible so I tend to leave mine um, to edit overnight the long ones I do have some short ones now I will burnish it all in with a blending pencil and finish the moon off off camera because I need to find my um, eraser and I don't know where it is with that what I'll do is I'll just erase around the edge of the moon I'll put some cream on it and it'll just look like give the moon a bit of a shimmer um, but uh, yeah it's very very hard to uh, know what to do sometimes but the way I'm looking at it is we nearly finished this is sepia it's a nice colour I'll burnish this off while I'm watching a video later use the blender to uh, blend it as you see I've already done it on the coat the cloak and it looks really nice the cloak that's why there's not so many white gaps I know where my um, sharp my eraser is it's in my drawer but there's so much stuff in my drawer I've got to find it So we'll probably start another marker picture this week because we will be finishing this one very soon. Well, tonight. Because there's only really her basket and her arms to go. Her arm shield thing. Um, so we'll, we'll finish this one now. Even though it's going to take us probably to just over an hour. Like I said, I will do the finishing touches off camera. And then I will pick a marker picture. I have got one in mind actually that I want to do. Um, and it's from one of the Colour in Heaven magazines. It's from the um, Gothic Fairy Special, uh, which is the Micah Jelena one. Is it Micah Jelena? Yeah. I've done one from that, that book this month already and I just really like it. And there's one in there, sort of an alien one, an alien fairy, and I really want to do that. Um, and I want to do it with the other blends because I want to use um, the different blues for skin. So that's what I'm going to do with that one. But uh, obviously, uh, we need to finish this one first. But that'll be the next one, which I'll hopefully be filming. Well, uh, maybe, maybe even tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe Thursday. We're just going to give this a bit of a ready brown colour over the top enjoyed this picture I really like this book I'm looking forward to doing some more because like I, I really do want to do the Wizard of Oz one but I'm really wary of it because I love the Wizard of Oz and I'm worried about ruining it okay. I really am scared of ruining that one I'm not gonna lie all right so I need sort of a brownie colour for the basket, don't I? Maybe I have a white one. Maybe this burnt ochre. Yeah, that's quite nice. That'll do. But yeah, I do feel quite... worried about work because of this childcare issue but I can't do anything about it, it is what it is they say we, well you're going to be on a disciplinary I say well you'll have to discipline me then because there's not a lot I can do about it I can't make childcare child appear out of nowhere I would if I could 
I don't want to be off. I'm hoping it won't go on too long and mum will be better soon, but I have to, have to wait and see. Just put a little bit of brown over that just to give it a Sarah says tomorrow. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I could just say she's still ill, but I'm actually going to say, no, I've got no childcare because I've got no childcare. Uh, what do we want next? Oh, we want to go back to that sepia colour for her arm because I missed that one off. So like I said, I will burnish this in. I will go over it with a blender pencil and sort out the moon with the cream and then, that's nice. Um, and once I've done that, I'll obviously, I love that colour. I don't know where that comes from, it comes from there. it's one of the greys. have to um, see how it goes really. These metallics never work very well. But I have heard if you put down chrome yellow, and this is with the um, polychromos I believe, a dark chrome yellow and then the gold on top, it works really well. So I've heard. I can't say for sure because I haven't actually tried it. I've missed this bit and I can't remember what colours I was using. That's fine. Okay, so I need a kind of little green. Because although there's wine in it, if it's red wine, it would be in a green bottle. to the stems of the flowers very very quickly and the leaves there we go <laughs> and then uh, we'll have lilac tulips I think it's actually a colour I like very much these colour tulips And the only thing I haven't done is her necklace and her earrings and I'm not very good at doing stones so I'll try that in a minute. Let me just, I need, it's like bread, it's like sort of a yellowy brown colour. Um, Then this yellow would then put some brown over it, it might be alright. I have no idea, but my battery's going as well. Actually, that's not too bad. It's a very pale looking thing, and I'm just going to take this brown here, which is a very light coloured brown, sort of clay rose beigey colour. Over it with that just to uh, give it a bit of more of a bready colour. Th oh, yeah, that looks nice. Looks a bit more like bread now, doesn't it? Right, we're going to use uh, eggshell on the label because uh, the label would probably be more than likely a very light colour. There we go. And then uh, We'll just use this sort of thing kind of for the cork at the top. And then we'll have sort of a burgundy red. Is this one? 
mulberry, that's the colour of her lip, so we'll use that for the... Right, that's that. All we got to do now are her earrings and her necklace. So I'm going to do the middle bit with this deeper colour. Like so. And I'm not going to worry about trying to make it look like um, it's glinting. I'm not that patient. Or to be honest, that interested in doing that. I'll just colour it in a lighter colour. Lighter red around the side. I know people could do this better than me, but I, I'm not one of those people who can patiently go and do it. It's enough for me to have to go and burnish all of it in now with the blending pencil. So this is it, we've finished. It's taken us nearly an hour just to finish that picture. There she is, there is Ruby Red. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this picture. Next time you'll see this, it'll be all burnished in and the moon will be finished. Um, and that'll be in our completed pages. We are currently at three. That's not good, is it? I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And if you are a subscriber, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a video. And I'll see you in the next one, which will be a Mark and Madness video. Bye.